today we are going to do chapter 10, lesson 7, fractions as one whole. Whole numbers can be written as fractions. When the numerator is the same as the denominator, the fraction equals 1. So, for example, if we have 4 over 4, that equals 1. So let's look at their example. There are four panes of glass in one window of Landon's classroom. Each pane of glass is one fourth the whole window. How many fourths equal one whole? Well, we know that there are one, two, three, four different window panes. So four fourths equal one whole. Four parts over a total of four parts equals one. Now they ask us to plane a, place a point on the number line to graph this fraction. The model shows 4, 4, and 1 share the same point or have the same size. So our point is going to go right here where it says 4, 4, or you can also see they've drawn a 1. So 4 fourths equals 1 whole, or 4 over 4 equals 1. Each one of those means the exact same thing. Go on to the next page. Looks like I need some counter colors. So the fraction one over one means one whole partitioned into one group. So one over one equals one. And they show us that with both this fraction tile and this counter. So how many holes are in three over one? Well, we have three parts partition into one part. So this is our one. So we go one, two, three parts, three over one, or three. There are three holes in one. So here's our key concept. If the numerator and the denominator are the same, the fraction is equivalent to one. So the example they give us three over three equals one. We could also say four over four or five over five. Those all equal one. If the denominator is one, so if the bottom is one, the fraction is equivalent to the whole number represented by the numerator. So our numerator here is three. So we have three whole numbers. If it was four over one, we would have four. If it was five over one, we would have five. So it's the same all the way down the line. Here's our guided practice. Write a fraction to represent the shaded part of each hole or set of holes. So we have to pay attention. Are the things connected or are they separate? So here they're connected. So our denominator is going to have how many total? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And all eight are colored in. So it's going to be eight over eight. We can say that equals one. Now over here, these are separate. These are separate holes. Think of these as counters. So there are four of them over one equals four. So let's see what other examples they have. Write each fraction to represent a shaded part of each hole or set of holes. So we still have to pay attention. Are they connected or are they separate? So for number three, these are connected. So we have one, two, three, four total parts and all four are colored in. So that equals one. For number four, these are separate. They're not touching, they're not part of the same shape. So our bottom is gonna be one and there are two parts. It's gonna be two over one. For number five, these are connected, so we're going to have 2 over 2. About number 6, all of these are separated, so we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But wait, do we put that on the denominator? Nope, we don't put that on the denominator because they're separate. We put that in the numerator, so 6 over 1. I hope you caught that. Number seven, these are all connected. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
So because they're connected, eight's gonna go on the bottom and on the top. But for this one, they're not connected. So we also have eight. And eight's gonna go in the numerator, while a one is gonna go on the denominator. Now we're gonna write each whole number as a fraction. Well, if it's a whole number, we have to have a one on the bottom. So four over one equals four. Think of that as four separate tokens, not all together. Two would be two over one. Six would be six over one. Now for number 12, we can put a lot of different things because we know that any number over itself is one. So I'm gonna say six over six equals one. Or we could say eight over eight or two over two. Those all equal one. Now, if we want eight separate pieces, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we're gonna have a one on the bottom and an eight on the top. Same over here three on the top, one on the bottom. Find the missing numerators and denominators, then circle the model that is not a fraction for one whole. So we have to see, so there's one, two, three, four, five colored in. So this can be five over six. We've got one, two, three, four colored in one, two, three colored in over three total pieces and two colored in over two separate pieces. And it asks us to circle the model that's not a fraction of one whole. And because these aren't equal, it's gonna be five over six. Write three different fractions equivalent to one. Well, we did that up here in number 12. So we can say any number over itself. So we can say five over five, four over four. So you can do 100 over 100, just as long as the top and the bottom or the numerator and the denominator are the exact same. On to the next page. Tim has seven magazines. He gave them all to Mike. Write a fraction that represents the part of magazines Tim gave to Mike. Then write the fraction as a whole number. So magazines are seven separate things. So we're gonna say seven over one and the fraction equals seven. Connor has three cups of raisins. Write the number of cups of raisins that Connor has as a fraction. Then write the fraction as a whole number. So he has three cups of raisins over one. And we're gonna draw that down on the number line here as three. Carla took two photographs at a zoo. Two of the photographs were of giraffes. Write the fraction that represents the part of the photographs that were giraffes. So they're asking for parts. So what part, not what number, but what part. So this one, is gonna be two over two equals one. Because if she took more photographs, let's say she took 12 photographs, our denominator would be 12, but our numerator would still be two. Okay, now we're gonna draw figures to represent four over one and six over six as whole numbers. So let's do four over one. Well, those are gonna be four separate pieces, not touching. Six over six, well, we have to draw one box that has six pieces and shade in all six pieces. And that shows us that six over six also equals one. So for number 24, how can whole numbers be represented as fractions? Well we can have any number, so say three over one equals three. Any number over one is gonna be this top number. Think if we were taking seven pieces of chocolate 
and we wanted to split it only into one group. That would just be seven. So seven over one would equal seven. And that's how we can represent whole numbers as fractions. And it might seem a little silly right now, why are we drawing this extra one? But when we get into addition and subtraction, it'll be really important to remember that one. So on to your homework. So again, you're gonna have to do your homework on your own, but let's go through a couple of them. So we're gonna write a fraction to represent the shaded part of each whole. So we're gonna remember, are they touching or are they separate? Well, these are all touching. So the denominator is gonna be how many pieces there are. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And all of them are colored in. So it's gonna be eight over eight. For number three and four, are these touching or are they separate? These are separate. So we have two separate pieces, but they're all one piece on their own. And so this, Remember this equals two because the denominator is one. We're gonna do the same thing down here where we're gonna write each whole number as a fraction and then a couple word problems. So you've got this and I will see you tomorrow.